So this is an official review. Uh, this is a practice final that we created by looking at the final and just rewriting the question over again, changing a couple of numbers or a couple of different situations. So it's almost exactly like the final. The final's actually 32 questions long. You have an hour and 20 minutes to do it. This review is 32 questions long. So uh, let's start by looking at number one. Uh, by the way, this is not in order because there's two versions or there's multiple versions of the final. So this is not exactly like version A or exactly like version B. But every single question on this practice test, I guarantee, is on the final just with the different, different numbers. If you understand this, you'll understand the final. Number one, Bob has at most $954 to buy a new cell phone and a pair of wireless headphones. Okay. <laughs> Which inequality represents the situation? So what does this mean that Bob has at most $954? He doesn't have more than that, so he could spend less than that, right? Or he could spend $954, exactly. So what kind of inequality is that? Less than or equal to. So right off the bat, you already know that the answer is D. You already know the answer is D, right? Not only that, he wants to buy two things. He wants to buy uh, the new cell phone and a pair of wireless headphones. So if you call the, the cell phone, X, actually down here, X, and the uh, wireless headphones Y, then D would be your correct answer on that one. So it's really simple, straightforward. There's no math going on right here. This is on the final. But instead of Bob buying uh, a cell phone and a pair of headphones, it might be that Isabel buys a pair of jeans and boots, right? And she has at most $84 to do that, or at most $120. So that's the, the change that's going to be on the final. Um, so keep that in mind. Number one, easy. No math involved. Number two, determine which ordered pairs are part of the solution set of y plus 5 is less than 3x minus 7. So what are they giving us here, guys? The, the x and y values, right? And it's saying which ones are solutions. How do you know if something's a solution? You plug it in and see if it works, right? Like, how about this? This is totally off topic. X plus 2 equals 5. I, I give this one all over and over again, this example. Is the solution 3? Yeah. Yes. Is the solution 7? No. Why is the solution 3? Because 3 plus 2 equals 5, right? So in other words, if you take the number that you say the answer is and you plug it in, and if it's a true statement, then that's what makes it an answer. So keep that in mind, that what you plug in, if it works, then that's the solution. Why is it a solution? Because it works. If you plug it in and it doesn't work, then it's not a solution. So if you take a look at example, uh, or at option A, x is negative 4, y is negative 24. So you have to plug in your y value of negative 24 right there where the y is at. So that's going to be uh, negative 24 plus 5 is less than um, 3x, 3 times x. But as you can see, x is negative 4. So you need to plug in a negative 4 right in there. And then minus 7 at the very end. Does everybody see how I plugged in my x value of negative 4 right in there? and my y value of negative 24 right there. Now let's see if it actually works. If I say negative 24 plus 5, that is negative 19. And on this side, I have negative 12 minus 7. Negative 12 minus 7, that's negative 19 as well. So is that a true statement? No. This is not a true statement. This does not work. Negative 19 is not less than negative 19, so A did not work. You guys understand? So what we're doing here is just plugging in and seeing if it works. If I were to plug in a 0 for x right here, then that would be 3 times 0, which is 0. And 0 minus 7, what's 0 minus 7? Negative 7. So let's just jot that down, that on that side I have negative 7. I have the inequality. And then let's plug in the y value of 1. Plug it in right here. And that'll be 1 plus 5. What's 1 plus 5? 6. So I'd have a 6 on the left side of that inequality. Is that a true statement for option B? Is 6 less than negative 7? No, it's not. 
That didn't work either, so B does not work either. Does that make sense? Let's move on to C. Um, C, if I plug in a 4 for Y, let me actually show my work here. 4 plus 5 has to be less than 3 times X minus 7. And we said, okay, so the Y came from, is 4. So 4 is right there, so 4 is right here. And then the plus 5 is right there, plus 5. Less than, less than, 3 times X. X is negative 1. So if I plug in a negative 1 right there, and I plugged in a 4 over here, um, is it a true statement? I'll have 9 is less than, that's negative 3 minus 7. 9 is less than negative 10. What do you think of that? Also false. This did not work, so this does not work either. So obviously my answer is D. Let's actually just show how D really does work. So if you plug in 8, for y, because 8's the y value, and plug in 7 for x, this is what it'll say. It'll say 8 plus 5 is less than 3 times 7 minus 7. So 8 plus 5 is 13, and 13 is going to be less than, if I go 3 times 7, that's 21. 21 minus 7 is 14. No. So we have a 14 right here, and if you think about that, that is a true statement. 13 is less than 14. So that's how we got the correct answer, D, for number two. Let's move on to number three. Whoa. Let's move on to number three. Number three, solve the following single variable inequality. So this is just like an equation. You need to get Z by itself on one side of the equal sign, but in this case of the inequality. So you want to get z by itself. Where's z at? Is it on the left side of the inequality or on the right side of the inequality? It's on both sides of the inequality. You don't want a 7z right here and a 4z over here. You only want z on one side. So it's up to you to get rid of one of them. Which one would you like to get rid of? The 4z? Okay, let's get rid of that 4z by doing the opposite of 4z, which is minus 4z cancels out. What you do to one side, you do to the other side, minus 4z. 7z take away 4z is 3z. Let's bring down the rest. Minus 6 is greater than 12. So we are solving for z. Let's get z by itself on the left side of the inequality. What do I do next? Add 6. So I'm going to go plus 6, plus 6, cancels out, or it doesn't cancel out, but it becomes 0. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. We end up with 3z is greater than 18. My final step is to get rid of the multiplication of 3 in front of the z. So I divide by 3 and divide by 3. Do I have to flip this inequality? No, no because I did not divide by a negative. If I would have divided by a negative, then I'd have to flip it and make it less than. But right now, it's going to stay exactly the same. So my final answer is z is greater than 6. And that is the answer to that inequality. And yes, that's on the final. Of course, the final exam is testing everything we've done. So this is from way back when. So it's not that difficult. It's pretty easy. Let's move on. Here's another super easy one. You guys remember from functions and relations? Uh, you apply the vertical line test on this one. Remember, a function is saying that for each input, there's exactly one output. For each input, there's exactly one output. That means that for each x value, there's exactly and only one y value. So if you plug in a certain number and you get out two answers, then it's no longer a function machine. It's a broken machine, which we call just a relation. So right here, the vertical line test, if I draw a vertical line, it's going to cross here and here. So that's no longer, it fails the vertical line test. It's not a function. It's just a relation. Why is that? Because, I mean, even if we were to think of these as x and y values, this coordinate right here, that's a coordinate 4, 2. And this coordinate down here is a coordinate 4, negative 2. So as you can see, imagine the machine. You plug in a 4, you get out a 2. You plug in a 4 again, you get out a negative 2. That machine's broken, right? For each input, there has to be one output only. So if I plug in a 4 and get out a 2, I plug in a 4 again, I better get out a 2 again. But as you can see, it gave me the opposite value, negative 2. So that's how I know it's no longer a function. It's just a relation. Yay? Yay. How about uh, the next one right here? Is this one a function? This one here? 
Yes, it is. If you draw any vertical line, here's a vertical line, it only crosses there. Here's a vertical line, only crosses there. Here's a vertical line, only crosses there. And so on, and so on. It'll only cross at one location, as opposed to this guy over here that crosses here and here. So this one failed the vertical line test, it's just a relation. This one passes the vertical line test, so we call that what? Function. There will be one question like this on the final, but there's gonna be four options instead of two, right? And you need to find the one that's just a relation or find the one that is a function, depending on what they ask you. So number five, it says, which of the following are not linear equations? This is from a while back. Now remember, nonlinear equations are equations that have like an, a variable squared or a variable to the third power. So if you have x squared, y squared, it's no longer a linear equation, it's some other type of curve. Um, also, if you ever have x's or y's multiplied together, then it's no longer a, a linear equation, it's something else. Or you can't have also variables in the denominator. So this one's definitely linear. It's in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. This one's also linear. It's really in y equals mx plus b, but the b value is really negative 4. If you think about it, 2 squared is 4. This one is linear. It's in standard form. It's easy to find the x and the y-intercepts. This one is not linear. So which of the following are not linear? Well, this one is the one that's not linear. And why is that? Because it has a x times y right there. x times y, it changes it. It's no longer a straight line. It's something else. What do you guys think? All right. Let's move on to number six. It says, find the slope of the line passing through the following two points. So when I give you two points and they ask you for the slope, this is where you need your slope formula. So there's my formula. And like always, I recommend starting your formula with the division and with the subtractions and labeling your uh, x and y, your x and y values. This is your first point, so we put a one right next to them. This is your second point, so we put a two right next to them. Now we could plug in our values. Y2 is negative seven. Y1 is also negative seven. X2 is five, and X1 is negative three. And of course, when you do the formula, if you ever have a minus minus, change it to plus plus change to plus plus, you will get zero on top over eight. So what is our slope? Zero. It is zero, okay? If zero is on top, the answer is zero. If zero is underneath a number, then it's undefined. Keep that in mind, okay? It's really simple, zero divided by eight. If you have nothing and you chop it up into eight pieces, it's still nothing, right? So zero on top, the answer is zero. Zero underneath, the answer is undefined because you can't divide by zero. I mean, technically, if you did this on a calculator, zero divided by eight and you hit the equal button, it'll say zero. So your answer is zero. But if you had zero on the bottom, if you had eight on top divided by zero and try that on a calculator, it'll say uh, error. It'll say uh, that you can't do it because you cannot divide by zero. That's when it's undefined. Moving on to number seven. Uh, they give us two more points. They want us to find the slope. Once again, we're going to use the slope formula. So there's our formula. And we need to label our x and y values, our x and y values. This is your first point. This is your second point. Once again, do the division bar. Do the subtraction symbols first. Then plug in your values. Your y2 value is 5. Your y1 value is negative 1. Your x2 value is 4. Your x1 value is negative 4. That way, when you uh, do the math, the minus minus, change the plus plus, we will end up with 6 over 8, right? Yes. And 6 over 8, if you look for that on the multiple choice answer on your final, it's not going to be there. The reason is uh, 6 over 8 could be reduced by 2, and it'll become 3 over 4. So the correct slope would be 3 fourths. Let's move on to number 8. Number eight is fun because it's graphing. Now we've learned how to ma graph with many different ways of doing it. You could find the x and the y-intercept because it's in standard form. 
or you could change the form, change the way it looks, and rewrite it in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So to get in y equals mx plus b form, the correct first step would be to add 3x to both sides to start getting the y by itself. Now, of course, 12 plus 3x, you can't do it, so we're going to rewrite it. But instead of 12 plus 3x, I'm going to write the x term first. So I'm going to bring down the 4y, bring down the equal sign. I'm going to write 3x and br then bring down the plus 12. So then our final step would be to divide everything by 4 to get that y by itself. Everything by 4. So my final slope-intercept form equation is y equals 3 fourths x plus 3 because 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now this is really easy to graph because it's in slope-intercept form. Why is it called slope-intercept form? Because you could clearly see your m value, which is 3 fourths, and you could also see your b value, which is 3. So if we know the m and we know the b, we for sure know where it crosses the y-axis. What's the b value? 3. So let's go to 3 on the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, put a dot right there. Now from that point, what do I do? You go up 3 over 4. Now this might be a little confusing because the graph is so small, right? It's so small. So if I go up 1, 2, 3, check it out. Uh, 1, 2, 3, and then over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, I'd be up here somewhere, correct? If I went up 1, 2, 3, and then go over 1, 2, 3, 4, I would be right here at that point, and I would actually connect these dots. But notice that that dot is off the graph, so that's not really that great. So let's use the pattern backwards. Instead of going up 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, let's go backwards 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3. So let's go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then down 1, 2, 3. Put a dot right here. And of course, if you connect your dots, you have your line right there. So I hope that helps. Um, if you wanted to, you could have gone for your x and y intercepts. So we already see the line where it's at, but let's just for funsies here, let's find the x and the y intercepts. So let me rewrite my equation on number eight. And let me set up the x int y int and put a squiggly line in between them. Now for the x intercept, we must set y equal to zero. So I'm gonna rewrite my equation negative three x plus 4, but instead of y, I'm going to put a times 0, and then equals 12. And for my x-intercept, I need to set x equal to, I mean, for my y-intercept over here, I need to set x equal to 0. So over here, when I rewrite my equation, my x has to be 0. So it's really going to say uh, negative 3 times 0 uh, plus 4y equals 12. Okay, so let's do the work on both of these. On the x-intercept side, 4 times 0 is nothing. So I really have negative 3x equals 12. My final step would be to divide by negative 3, and I get x equals negative 4. This is my x-intercept value. That's where my line will cross the x-axis. And on the other one, negative 3 times 0, that disappears. I really have 4y equals 12, so if I divide by 4 and divide by 4, I'll have my y-intercept value. Y-intercept is 3. So I know where it crosses my x at negative 4 and it crosses my y at 3. If I go to the graph, it really does cross my x at negative 4 and it crosses my y at positive 3. So it's the same exact line. It all depends on how you feel more comfortable. I like slope-intercept form. I like getting in y equals mx plus b but uh, the x and y intercepts also work on number eight. Moving on to number nine, uh, we want to graph this guy. Is it in slope intercept form? Yes. yes, it is. What is my m value? Negative three over two, whoops. And what is my b value? Plus zero is my b, right? So I know where it crosses my y axis. Where does it cross my y axis? Zero. And from that point, what do I do? Down three, one, two, three, and over two. I should put that in red. So yes, I did go down one, two, three, and over one, two, and I put a dot there. Now here's my line, I just need to draw it. Now I could use that same pattern backwards, two over 
uh, three up, two over, one, two, three up, and put a dot right there to extend it even further. Connect the dots, put some arrows on it, you're done. If it were an inequality, you'd have to test points and shade, but right here it's just an equation. We are done. So that's barely the first side of this uh, practice test. Piece of cake. I'm going to pick up with the video two on the back side of this page.